Hello and welcome to this special Channel 25 event. I am sitting next to the famous Tim Ear. Tim is right there. And Larry King's still here. Look oh. at this. Larry King. Larry King is here. Tim, I am so in awe right now sitting next to the two yes. legends oh, on television. Course, yeah. Come on, keep it coming. Keep it Come coming. On, yeah, keep, keep fishing it. That's great. Tell us what we're doing right now. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to have a question and answer session with Mr. Larry King and members of the audience who just happen to be a whole room full of Marshall University students, and I also see some professors thrown in too. So why not? The, 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 the question and answers will be open to professors, as long as that's okay with you. Okay. Not just students. <laughs> okay. Whatever you great. say, Tim. Our first question comes <laughs> He's from. He's in awe. Oh yes, he is. Awe. A, he I'm is in, in awe. School. Yes, in school. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to take us both to school. Our first question comes from Josephine Landgrave, who I've known since how long have I known you? I don't know. Patrick. Two years old, something like that. Uh, Josephine, you have a question for Larry King. Studying broadcast journalism here at Marshall, what advice would you give to students that want a future in broadcast? Well, it's a great question. I uh, I never went to college. Uh, I just got out of high school by the skin of my teeth. My father had died when I was nine years old, and I always wanted to be a broadcaster. But I had a bunch of odd jobs and started in Miami in 1957. And then you didn't need college. Today you need college, and it's great to have a facility like this here where you can practice your means. You can get on and do television, you can do stuff. Then the important thing is to intern somewhere. Get a job at a television and get in. The main thing in this business is get in. I mean get in anywhere. If you are a broadcast major and you finish school and you're willing to go and you're in, in Pennsylvania somewhere in Scranton and they offer you a job as a weekend person cleaning up the station, take the job. Because once you're there, and you have some ability and you keep telling them how good you are, they're gonna, you're going to get a shot. Someone's going to get sick one day, you're going to get on. I, there's nobody in the business of radio and television who doesn't want to be in it. Everyone in it wants to be in it. So the competition is fierce. But there's always an opening. If you got talent, you will out. There is no great undiscovered talent sitting somewhere in a small town in Idaho. If you've got talent, you will be found. But you've got to persevere. As Woody Allen said, you know, 80% of success is showing up. You've got to get off the porch. You can't just sit there. It's not going to come to you. But if you want it, you've got to really want it. I wanted it, man. I wanted to be a... I didn't want fame. I wasn't interested in the money part, but I wanted to broadcast. I wanted to be on radio. I wanted to be on television. I wanted to... Man, I was, I was just ambitious to the core. You gotta have that. If you don't have it, don't do it because the the competition's fierce. Thank Stay you. with it. Thank you. So you didn't want to have, it, but you you ended up with it, and you're doing great at well, it. Well, it's not. I did. I, well, I, I I never said, boy, I'm gonna make a lot of money, or boy, I'm gonna be well known. That was never the reason. All I wanted to do is sit by a microphone, and even it was just saying, this is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. That would have been a thrill of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. So I had no idea that all this would happen to me, what's happened to me. I had no idea. So all that was the result. In fact, every successful person I know never went into it because there was money involved or fame involved. They went into it because they loved it. All right, Tim here has our next person. Larry, you obviously looking? you've interviewed uh, how many thousands of people over the years? Over 50,000. Over 50,000. Jonathan Austin is a junior here at Marshall. Jonathan, you have a question for Larry. Yes, sir. Mr. King, I just want to know, what was your most memorable interview that you ever had that you will never forget? Well, there have been so many when you've done that many. You know, I've done six American presidents, uh, prime ministers, presidents of countries, uh, Frank Sinatra, who was hard to get. Uh, Elizabeth Taylor, famous actresses, all the leaders of the civil rights movement, all the generals of the Vietnam, in the Vietnam War, all the prime ministers of Israel. So it's so hard to pick out one person. You know, for music or the arts or movies or there was so many. To pick out one is is impossible. It would be impossible. It's just been a rewarding career. I'm lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time. Okay. 
Excellent. Okay, we have another question. Television's Patrick Webb is standing by. Patrick, who is with you right now? Thanks, Jamie. Our next question comes from Kayla Markham, a junior here at Marshall University. Mr. King, you've obviously been very successful in your career, but you said earlier that all you really wanted to do was get into broadcast. What, in your mind, was success when you first started out? Like, what, what was your goal? Well, my first goal was to get on. And I started in a very small little radio station in Miami. Uh, they gave me my name that day. I tell a story when I'll appear here tonight at the, at the Albi. Um, I always wanted to get into broadcasting. And I knocked on doors and got turned down. I went down to Miami. And finally, I got hired. And it was my first day on the air. And you never forget your first day on the air. And I'm scared and I'm nervous. And the general manager calls me in. And he says, well, this is your first day. And I was on from 9 to 12 in the morning playing music, disc jockey. And then I would do sports and news in the afternoon. It was everything I dreamed of. Didn't matter it was a small station. It was just this was. <clears throat> the general manager calls me and I go on at 9. It's about quarter to 9. And he says to me, okay, good luck to us. I said, thank you. And then he said, what name are you going to use? I said, what are you talking about? He said, you can't use Larry Zeiger. My name is Zeiger. I had it legally changed later. I said, what do you mean? He says, Zeiger, they won't remember it. They won't know how to spell it. It's too ethnic. Now you could use any name. So I said, well, what, 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 I'm going on in 10 minutes. What am I going to do? And he had the Miami Herald open, and there was an ad for King's Wholesale Liquors. <laughs> and he said, how about Larry King? I said, OK, I'm Larry King. Now I go in. I sit down. It's 9 o'clock. I got the music ready. Les Elgard swinging down the lane. And I'm going to fade the music and talk over the music like all disc jockeys do. Da -da 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 -da. I fade the music, turn on the microphone, nothing comes out. I bring the music up again. Fade the music, nothing comes out. Now, if you're listening at home, all you're hearing is, ah, 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 ah. And I looked at the clock, it was like four minutes after nine, and I said to myself, you know, I don't have the guts. I wanted it, but I can't do it. I'm too nervous, and so I'll never have a career. All that went through my mind, sitting there. I was sweating, scared to death. It was May 1st, 1957. And the door to the control room kicked open. And it was Marshall Simmons, the general manager of the station, who gave me my name. And he said, this is a communications business, damn it! Communicate! <laughs> and he slammed the door. And what I did that day is something I would do to this day and that I would advise any student to do. I turned on the mic and said, good morning. My name is Larry King. That's the first time I've ever said that. I've just been given that name. This is my first day on the air. All my life I wanted to be on the air. I'm sitting here with my music and I can't wait for this. And I was scared. And I was too scared to talk. And the general manager just kicked open the door. And he said, damn it, this is a communications business. Communic so all I did was tell the audience exactly what had just happened. <laughs> why I didn't speak, why I got the new name, why, and how the general manager kicked open the door. And I learned something that day, that if you're honest with the audience, you can never go wrong, never. For example, if you were listening that day, any mistake I made, if I cued the wrong record, if I flubbed a commercial, you say, hey, it's his first day. He's nervous. It's his first day. So I would do, and someone said, well, what would you do if there was a fire in the studio? I would say, there's a fire in the studio. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, someone asked me, what if you were walking down the hall at NBC? Someone grabbed you and said, Tom Brokaw's sick, you're on. I would say, I was walking down the hall, and someone just grabbed me and said, Tom Brokaw's sick, and I'm on, and I'll try to do this. You can't go wrong. That was my first day on the air. But I always wanted it. I was, when I was a kid, I, was, I don't know why I was. When I was five years old, I used to imitate radio announcers. I would listen to old shows on the radio and go into the bathroom. We were very poor. We had this little apartment. And I had a younger brother and my mother. And I, my father had died. And I would uh, do things like suspense. You know, who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men, the shadow knows. You know, I do it. There was a program years ago called Lights Out. It was on Sunday night at 10.30, Arch Obler. It was a scary pro Man, you listen to the show, you die. And the show used to begin the same way. 
try to remember it. It was 10.30. Crawl under your couch. <laughs> Lower your blinds. Lock your door. <laughs> and turn your lights up. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Uh, but I wanted great. to do that. Excellent. Excellent. Well, you told everybody to crawl underneath the beds, so Tim has taken your advice. Either he's proposing to our next student or just very scared. Tim, I, I better not be proposing. She's in high school. I was missing. Okay. I thought these were all college students. Apparently, we have a high schooler who snuck in. Lauren Brumfield is a junior at Huntington High School, and uh, you have a question for Larry. Um, you had a dinner. Um, it aired on CNN probably a month or two ago, and you had Conan O'Brien, um, Russell Brand and Tyra Banks and Seth MacFarlane. And I was wondering, why did you have these people over to your home for this We uh, thought of what way to do a special. <laughs> it was the last special I did for CNN. And uh, what about an idea of dinner at the Kings? And let's have like seven unique people, all in different phrases. We're gonna have Shaquille O'Neal and Quincy Jones. and Let's put them all together and just tape a dinner and see how it goes. And we just, we taped for two and a half hours and brought it down to an hour. It was one of the most successful specials ever done on CNN. It was fun to do. It was great that cameras positioned everywhere and we greeted people at the door. And we had the founder of, of, uh, of uh, Twitter. <laughs> I'm not into modern technology, but he was a great guy. And uh, Jack Dorsey is his name, just had dinner with him last week. He founded Twitter, he was there. So we had all these disparate groups of people. Somebody just fell. <laughs> <laughs> we had all these disparate groups of people and bam, it worked. Because we discussed so many other things. Conan got insane when he learned that I wanted to be frozen. Uh, <laughs> you know, cryonics is where you die, they freeze you. Now, to me, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't believe in an afterlife, and I don't, I don't have any of those beliefs. So there's only three ways to go. You could either be put in a grave, be burnt, or frozen. I pick frozen, because someday they may cure the disease and unfreeze me, and I'll be back. My wife says, could be 200 years later, you won't know anybody. I said, I'll meet new people. <laughs> But that, that dinner was a load of fun, and that's how it came about, just the idea of doing it. Now, you mentioned something right there, the Twitter. Yeah. Everyone does Twitter now. Do you think if you were still doing your show every night that you would tweet, coming up on Larry King tonight, or do you think that Twitter is just too much? Because people I guess, so I guess, well, I, I Twitter, but I don't Twitter Twitter. Not a, right. I dictate it. Okay. I dictate it to a producer or my wife. I don't hit the buttons. Right. But I do Twitter. I have 2,200,000 followers. You want to have one more after this show? Well, I love that. And I'm one of the, Jack told me that I'm one of the recommended Twitterers. So I can imagine. They recommend me. Now, I used to write a column for USA Today in which I would just do thoughts that came into my mind. Just write thoughts. And uh, Jerry Seinfeld said that I was the original Twitterer. That that was a, you'd have to tweet. You have to do whatever the modern technology takes you. If the internet, the internet's bigger than television now, you gotta do the internet. You gotta Twitter, you gotta have Facebook. I'm not into it as a doer, but I understand it. Definitely would have to be using it. That's outstanding. Okay, television's Patrick Webb is standing by. Patrick, who do you have now? Larry, our next question comes from broadcast journalism major Alyssa Salyers. Um, hi, Larry. Um, hi. <laughs> uh, you've interviewed some of um, the most important people of our time. Is there any one person or a few people that you wish that you could still sit down and talk to? You? Oh, yeah, it's a good question. I would love to have interviewed Fidel Castro. Um, he's the longest running head of state, maybe ever, certainly of the 20th century. Uh, he led a successful revolution, he was in jail. He, uh, forget whether he was a communist or evil or not, if you run a country for 50 years and you have this immense buildup of, of passion that he, that he had with Che Guevara and taking over that country, and I visited Havana two years ago, we tried to get him, we haven't been able to get him, he would be number one, would be 
Fidel Castro. And who else that I haven't, I've done so many people. I've done Putin, and did Tony Blair, I did the President of France, I did Chavez, I did Ahmadinejad. I'm talking about world leaders now. Hmm. I did, I did the last interview with Gaddafi. That was nuts. <laughs> no, they brought him in, and two men come in ahead of him, and they go, and now, brother leader. And brother leader walks in. And I said to him, do I call you brother or Mr. Leader? <laughs> I wanted to say, when you check into a hotel, do you write brother leader? Uh, so I think Castro would be, Castro would be at the top of the list. So is there anyone that your producer said, Larry, we're going here, and you thought to yourself, Ugh, I've done this before. I don't that know. happens many times. How do you handle that? There's, you, you lose. Mm -hmm. uh, because you have to have faith that your producer has a key to what the public wants. You're a broadcaster. Now, if it were up to me, I would do famous people, interesting other people, I'd do sports. I'm a sports freak. Well, we don't, you can't do much sports today in prime time because ESPN, there's always a game on. In other words, if I were home, I wouldn't watch me. I would watch a clip of basketball. So you can't do sports, but I would want to do sports. But sometimes the producer will say, for example, we did a murder trial for like 20 straight nights. Come on. Yeah. Uh, the Kardashians. <laughs> Larry, they're coming, up, they're coming up next week. They're going to be on the show next week. Ryan Seacrest is a good friend. He produces their show. I don't like people who are famous. Not don't like them personally. I like them fine. Famous for being famous. Mm -hmm. They don't, they don't, Paris Hilton. I know her parents very well. I know, Par I interviewed Paris when she got out of prison. I flew back on a plane recently. We both did the same event in Vegas. She's a very nice girl. But there's, what's the there there, you know? I asked her, what did you read when you were in prison? She said, the Bible. Mm -hmm. You read the whole Bible. <laughs> What was your favorite part? Everything. <laughs> you know, what are they going to say? So those are the kind of people, you do the best you can. But yes, many, many times, you're doing someone, especially lately, because there's so much tabloid. Absolutely. Okay. Tim Ear is standing by with Ashton Bias. Tim, take it away. Ashton's a senior, and I said, what are you going to ask, Larry? She said, I want to talk about the future. So ask your question about the future, Ashton. Yeah, um, being a senior, you know, I've heard that journalism, uh, some people might say it's a dying field with a lot of newspapers going out of business. And my question to you was just, what do you think about the future of journalism? You know, what would you say to us graduating, going into the field? Well, one, it's impossible to predict. Who would have predicted 20 years ago, Twitter or Facebook or any of that? Uh, I'm sorry about print. I love print. Uh, one of my favorite things is the morning newspapers. First thing I do in the morning, I take the boys to school, but right before that, I get my newspapers. I love the feel of it. I like ink print on my fingers. I learn more from newspapers than I learn from broadcasting, even though I'm in broadcasting, because I get depth. I read the New York Times today flying here. It took about an hour. To, you know, and they're doing stuff on the campaign that broadcasting can't touch, can't touch it. The in-depth stories, the angles, but, I don't know any young people who read the paper. They don't read the papers anymore. My, my kids are 13 and 12. When I was 13, I was reading newspapers. They get everything from television. So the future is in broadcasting. Radio will always have a place because it's in your car. You can't have television in your car unless you want to crash. <laughs> uh, so radio will always have its place. The internet is obviously consuming and to me, what's remarkable to me is the whole instantaneous. As I was thinking the other day, when I was a kid, in order to see a news event, you had to go to Movie Tone News once a week in the movie theaters. And that's how I saw the A-bomb. It was a Movie Tone News, there was no television. And then television came, but if it was a war, you saw it on tape. It was the day before. Now, you do a war in Iraq, you see it live. You're in Afghanistan, let's go to Afghanistan live. And another thing, it eats it up and spits it out so fast. 
that everything is immediate. Damn, now, what are we going to do now? Oh, no, that was tonight's guest. Who's tomorrow? Who you got tomorrow? And you're, gonna, you're entering that world. It's a frenetic, frantic, I'm inventing my word, it's frenetic. Fine. It's in the dictionary already, real quick. We're qu she just put it in the dictionary. It's quick, like you were saying, it? we're moving. It's a fret, I like the word, don't you? <laughs> it's a frenetic world. <laughs> and it's, it's so all encompassing. The only thing I can tell you is, stay with it. If your goal is print journalism, you have to be unique. You have to think magazines, long form writing, angles. The day of the Daily Beat reporter covering the courthouse is gone away. It's very sad, but it's, it's like, hey, I'm sure the guy who owned the small grocery store, what happened when the, the supermarket came in? Or you, you, you owned a bicycle and somebody invented a car. You know, it, it, life goes on. Excellent. All right, moving on, we have television Patrick Webb with somebody else in our audience. <coughs> Stephen here has a great question about journalism ego. Hey Larry, you talked about ego and uh, leaving it at the door when you interview people. How do you feel about public personalities, particularly journalists and journalistic outlets that don't do that and infuse their Well, political I'm not a fan of it. That, that's what we have today. We have Fox News today, which is the Republican Party, and MSNBC, which is the Democratic Party, and CNN trying to stay in the middle. CNN does a very good job of trying to stay in the middle, but they finish third to those two. So it's obviously the public wants opinion. I don't learn anything uh, when I watch either a channel that agrees with me or disagrees, because it's preaching to the choir. I like the journalism that I grew up with. Edward R. Murrow, Walter Cronkite, giants. Giants, people who gave you a story. Today it's soapbox, today hosts, the guests are a prop for the host. There's no such thing as leaving I out. You turn on any television host today and you hear the word I a lot. That's because they're more involved with themselves than with the guest. So it turns me off, it turns me off. But it's the nature of the beast, it is what it is. It's sad to me. Outstanding, all right, Tim here. Who do you guys stand in there? I have another question. Can I get your name? My name's Amy McAllister Ethel. Okay, and uh, what's your question for Larry? My question for Larry is, um, I'm, well, I'm also a journalism major here at Marshall, um, but I have a, a husband and a small child at home, and my question is, how do you find that balance between family and career? Because you obviously love your family very much, and you've had great success in your life, and so what advice would you have for a young parent such as myself who loves journalism, but also loves their family very much and wants to find that balance. It's hard. In my early times, I just married a lot. <laughs> uh, because what happens was that I always, and, and this is a price you pay, I put work ahead of, uh, of the family. Not, a, the, not of the children, but I spend more time with my children now than I spent with my three grown children, much more. I'm a better father than I ever was because I wanted so much to do so many things. So I wanted to write, I wanted to do television, I wanted to do radio. And today I'm trying to space it more because uh, if, if, if I got, I used to say if I got two calls, one CNN urgent, call home urgent, I would call CNN first. This would have been 15, 20 years ago. It's a true answer. Today I would call home first. But my priority was broadcast. The difficult time you're gonna have is, you love your husband and you love your child, but you really love journalism. So there'll be days when you won't go home. But if there are too many days when you go home, you're in the wrong profession. You have to balance it. It's, it's not gonna be easy. It's not easy. It depends on what you give your life to. If you love something that much, if, if you're away 50% of the time, you're gonna be married more than once, or you're gonna compensate. You're gonna pay a price. You're gonna give in. I heard a comic say the other day, you wanna know the secret of a happy marriage? When you wake up in the morning, this is the husband, just turn over to your wife and say, I'm sorry. 
No, absolutely. Because you know you did, absolutely. you know you did something that ticked her off. <laughs> All right, we have Patrick Webb standing there with the editor of the Parthon. You were reading that during our little break here. Uh, very, I'm taking, Myers. I'm taking a copy with me. Crystal, what do you think? Well, first of all, you didn't introduce me as TV's Patrick Webb, so I'm everybody knows you as TV's Patrick. By the way, I love. How'd you get a name like Crystal? Well, it? It's kind of like what? Crystal. Crystal. What a name. I'm not sure. I, I'm not <laughs> sure. My parents. It's a great name. Thank you. Um, so I was just wondering. I'm graduating in May, and I was wondering, can I have a job? <laughs> well, we're starting something new. Uh, here's what you do, Crystal. One, you got to be able to move. Oh, I'll move anywhere. <laughs> anywhere you need me to move. Can't wait to get out of here. <laughs> you got to be able to move. You send your resume. Uh, I don't have an address to send. All right, here's what you have to do. This may sound weird. Send your resume to Larry King, Beverly Hills. Okay. I'll It'll get find it. you. Yeah, they'll find me. Okay. I'm on the tour. <laughs> uh, send it to me because we, we, there's a new thing coming, and they might have something for you. Because we're looking for young, that. we'll be looking for young people. Excellent. Okay, and guess what? Everyone's doing right now. They are filling out Larry King, Beverly Hills. You are going to get so many resumes. I think you may have made a mistake. I'm not sure. By you the way, I, another thing I like, which is a whole new thing. You people probably never heard of this. This is a wild new idea. I told my son Chance about it. I think this could possibly make it. This is like crazy idea. Listen, pay attention. I'm, I'm writing this down. I'm not. My producer is. But it's, go ahead. it's called mail. <laughs> hold it, hold it. Listen. You go to this place and you get these little things. They're beautiful color little things. You put them in the corner of an envelope. Then you write an address. And you just <laughs> drop it into a box. And the next day, someone gets it and opens it. And it's your handwriting. It's not typed out. It's not a text. It's not a twit. It's you. It's you with them. Then there's a whole new thing that I've got too. I'll make sure to do that. A phone in your house that's attached to the wall. <laughs> the best thing about that phone is it works. You get to hear the other person. It doesn't. Oh, I lost you. Oh, can't. Oh, oh, you're kicking out. I'll call you back. Where's my? Where's my clicker? I lost my clicker. I don't know what I, where am I no, going No, you're this? going, wait, let me ask you a question though. You're talking about that little stamp. How much were those little stamps when you started sending them? When I started, it was three cents, but I still say, what is it now? How much is it? We don't do that. Whatever anymore. it is, That's 40, how much? 40, 40, okay. Best bargain in the world. All right, well, we're going to do that. Is that not a bargain? You spend 40 cents. You have to take this, drop it in, take it on a plane, fly it somewhere, and the guy has to deliver it to the what a, it's a steal. <laughs> All right, we have one more question. Okay, yeah, I got one agree? more time. One Jimmy more, uh, we have one more question from Sidney Ranson, who is a junior here, is that, a sophomore. sophomore, a sophomore, and then we have a special presentation from Ray, our student body president, who has something special for you, Larry. What's your question, Sid? Hi, um, you said that earlier that you wrote a column before, and it was just ideas that came to your head. Well, I just started writing an opinion column, and I'm very new to this. And I have a really hard time choosing what to write. So how did you, how did you decide? You can write about anything? Oh, yeah, that's the best world of all. When you can just write out your opinions in a column, just go with it. It's not easy. You know, a great writer once said, writing is easy. You put the paper in, slide it in, and then bleed. It's not easy. But you always have, a, if you're an opinionated person, there's opinions happening all the time. You probably have an opinion on Super Tuesday, the debates are coming. What's your opinion? Should Ron Paul drop out? Why should he drop? I mean, there's so many little things. You know, opinion on uh, the warming of the earth. You know, there's so many things. Just go with it. Don't be afraid of it. You can, by the way, you control it. It doesn't control you. Excellent last question. All right, Tim's coming back to sit down. As he mentioned, we have the student body president, Ray Harrell. He is going to give you a few things that you can take back with you on the plane. Step take it back here. to Beverly Hills. Let's see what you have this is Ray. Me. Mr. King, on behalf of the student body of the Martial Artist Series and the Alumni Association, uh, we wanted to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to come speak with us today. And we have these few gifts here. Uh, so thank you very much, sir. What is this? That is a crystal bucket. Yeah. Our mascot is the Thundering Herd, so. That is our. That's our beautiful. Right 
And we have a copy of the Marshall movie and a Marshall sweatshirt for you. Thank you. I shall, I shall wear this uh, with honor. And uh, it was one of my favorite movies. Uh, Matthew McConaughey is a real good guy. And uh, I think that's among the, among the great tragedies in the history of sports. And how this university recovered, I give you great credit. Outstanding. Thank you. Thank you, Larry, thank thank you, you very much. That if I have time for just one last question, do you miss being involved in sports on a daily basis? I know yeah. people who get into sports, they don't really want to get into news. Some guys, some guys end up... Well, I, I, start, I, I thought I'd be a sportscaster, and I used to do color for the Miami Dolphins. I did the unbeaten season. I would sit in on baseball games. And if you offered me right now to do a major league team for this year, I'd do it. Which team? Uh, Dodgers? Hopefully the Dodgers, because <laughs> I live there. Hopefully, a good, you don't want to be with a team that's really losing all the time. Pirates, you know? Tim. Yeah. Pirates, Pirates? Are gonna, Pirates are going to be better. I'm from Pittsburgh. So. Yeah. Yeah, Pirates yeah. are going to be better. Okay. Uh, and in fact, they had a great first half last year. Yeah, yeah I miss sports. Oh. The best thing about sports is it's unimportantly important. Mm -hmm. It is important if if it means something to you. The be yeah, how, how important is sports? George Will, the great writer, said to me once, if there was a headline in the Washington Post, George Will's secret sex life revealed. He would first turn to the Cub box score. <laughs> <laughs> That's, a That's sports, sports yeah. yeah. Thank you all very much. Thank you all for being here. Mr. King, we've got a few more things. There's a mug. Here's a pen from WNUL. I've got a Marshall hat that we're going to wow. give you. Here's a menu to the, for the union. Uh, Herb does a great job on... Fourth Avenue. This is a Victoria's Secret bag. Tim, this is for you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. For me, yeah. Thank you very much. Again, thank you everyone at the Marshall Artist Series and all the sponsors to bring Larry King to Marshall University. We appreciate everything you all do. Good night, everybody. Good night, man. <laughs> here's this. Here's this. Here's this.